Today, as I make this message, I don't know when you'll get a chance to hear it, is the 5th of October in the year of our Lord, 2021. On the 4th of October, just 24 hours earlier, Facebook, the world's largest social media, crashed, went down. And it happened about noon Eastern Standard Time here in the New York City area. And they were offline for about six hours. And the whole world was stymied by the fact that they couldn't log on to Facebook. And a lot of people went into conniptions. However, um, and a number of people speculated, including myself, how is it that Facebook server crashed that they were unable to uh, do any clicking or people were unable to do any clicking or log on or log in? To Facebook. I have a theory, and I want to suggest to you what I think it is. And I want, if the Facebook algorithm people or any other uh, trolls or haters uh, are listening to this, let me state that is simply a theory, uh, and it is not in any way meant to be fact. But please allow me the freedom of speech to promote a theory, uh, and it could be right or it could be wrong. My theory is that Facebook hacked itself. My, my theory is that Facebook went down for several reasons. There's been a lot of heat coming from Capitol Hill and a large number of other people that are ex-employees of Facebook um, regarding their tactics. And uh, they've been on a lot of scrutiny about, you know, who they allow to use their platforms and that there's a lot of violence, a lot of hatred uh, promoted through their platforms, and they allow it. Some people, they allow to speak hate, hateful, others that they don't. Uh, they also own WhatsApp uh, and Instagram, where it has been it alleged by a large number of people that Instagram has been used to deflate uh, and discourage a lot of young girls about their bodies if they don't have this voluptuous, if you will, large body parts that are being displayed on Instagram. And so there's a lot of heat that's going uh, towards Mark Zuckerberg, but towards the Facebook social media in general. And I believe what they did was they shut themselves down for, um, for six hours to clean up their act, to remove all kinds of information that could be if federal summons were issued, uh, inquiring about their internal operations, uh, and as much as that, they've got this whistleblower, this 37-year-old whistleblower named Francis Hogan, who was on 60 Minutes on Sunday night, spilling the beans about Facebook, and, I, and she was very detailed, she's very professional, she's very knowledgeable, and she was laying it all out, and she's testifying as I speak on Capitol Hill right now about what she considers the ills and the ill-gotten, um, if you will, profiteering of Facebook. So I'm of the mindset that Facebook crashed itself. That's number one. Number two is that I'm going to call a meeting with our education staff uh, because I've been noting since something. I've been aware of this, and I haven't been able to, wasn't able to fully pull it together until I've watched uh, what the, that Facebook has become this massive global behemoth in all languages, um, and and it, it has just become what I would refer to as a god with a small g. Now again, I say that uh, with, with a spiritual divinations, if you will, divinity um, connotation to it, and 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 no ways mean to be blasphemous, blasphemous towards the God who is God, or in any way to insult Facebook, but to give characterization to what I'm saying, God with a little g, and. I've been noticing this for a few years. I mean, I'm not very good at this technology that Facebook employs and the internet systems and, you know, going from touch screens or going from typing oh, to, to touch screens, et cetera, and the movement of that and all the various things that can happen on Facebook or all the internet programs. Um, and I noticed that younger people is almost that you can put a, a iPad or an iPhone in the hand of a two year old and they automatically can play these games, these jelly games or and they understand they all uh, and they just move right through it as if they were born with it wired to their brains. And I'm fascinated by that. And I'm fascinated by people who grown up with um, 
And my concern is this, is that as I also look at the rejection of truth and righteousness by so many in our society that you, uh, you, you just can't get young men to understand the world in terms of the way God created it, even though it was, uh, according to Jesus, uh, it, 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 Satan's kingdom. They don't see the same world. And I don't know if they ever will, that, that younger people's minds are acclimated to the, the processes. And if, if some new character or, or some new um, mode of operation uh, is, is, is displayed, because they're constantly, Facebook and other internet, social media platforms are constantly updating. They have no problems learning it or integrating it and falling right into it. And, and you know, there, there, there's a, a number of, listen, on any iPhone that you would have in your pocket that a, a seven-year-old would have in their pocket, there is enough computer power when that, it, there's more computer power there than there was with the kind of computers that sent the man to the moon and to, and computers now used by NASA. And yet most young people have no problem understanding it as well as they understand walking and eating. They have no problem learning all the various ways in which to click here, to go there, to understand, or to cut and paste, which is something I barely know how to do. I, I'm of the mindset, now please listen to this very carefully, as a preacher, as a theologian, as one who is concerned about humanity, and, and whether or not the allegations regarding Facebook are actually true, that they have become somewhat of a, if you're social media, God determining who lives and who dies, determining what young girls appreciate their body, their breasts, and their booties, and who doesn't. And, and they have the power to promote through the algorithm process if Facebook likes you, and Francis Hogan is stating, it's on record, that they promote that violence, that hate speech, uh, that it brings dollars to Facebook. And they algorithm it, and so it, so it gets spread abroad and gets promoted. And, and people who m make such posts are able to garner millions and millions of followers in a matter of a couple of days. However, if Facebook chooses, no matter how ethical you're or divine or specific or noble, your message may be, if they don't want you out there, it's going to be very difficult for you to break through because they have the algorithm control. If I'm, if I'm explaining what Francis Hogan is testifying to uh, here on, uh, uh, as a whistleblower of Facebook. So my concern is this. My concern is when I'm looking at I'm looking at humanity and I'm looking at why is it that these people are failing to grasp the world or failing to grasp God as a creator or failing to grasp a certain level of spirituality. And while Dr. Martin King relied heavily on the New York Times and Washington Post uh, to put his stories out to get people uh, to come to his marches, etc. Black Lives Matter and others have this social media platform where they can organize in two seconds around the world. And then there is this whole matter of the 6th of January, the year 2021, that a number of people are accusing Facebook as being the platform whereby these people that assaulted the temple of democracy were able to organize just like that on Facebook and that Facebook gave them the platform and allowed it and did not monitor it. So therefore, there has, these extraordinary powers have, have come, uh, come to be. And so I, I want to sit down with our education staff and began to look at it. Do we need to deprogram people who have been raised up on social media? You know, and that is not to necessarily speak ill because they had no choice. If you were born, you know, after the 1970s, you really have no choice. 
you were born into a world that moved more towards anti, if you will, creative processes and biblical ideas where everybody else was born and raised in a very religious, if you will, uh, ideology uh, and understanding. But after the 1970s, the 80s, and then at the, the 1990s, and, and the internet and other social media structure, you were born in it, and there's no way you can escape it. You, it is in, you know, the, the, the whole idea of social media, internet, uh, computer, uh, is a part of your DNA. And I'm not sure you can be deprogrammed. I've seen people say, you know, just take a break from Facebook, lay down your iPhone, your iPad, or whatever it is, and see if you can stay away from it for 24 hours. There are people that are on Facebook 24 hours a day, even in the bathroom. They take their computers, their phones to the bathroom. They take them when they eat and when they go. That People don't even communicate one another, you know, in normal communication by sitting and talking or holding. They don't do that anymore. Everybody communicate through these systems, this has become a monster in terms of, the, the, a, a, if, you, if you didn't understand the world prior to this, if you, people are never away from some social media platform unless they're sleeping. And the first thing that people do, if you're under 60 years old, say age and more, specifically under 40, the first thing that people do when they wake up is they go to that social media platform. They don't go to Jesus. They don't thank God. They don't even go to the bathroom. And if they do go to the bathroom, social media follows them all day long. And, you know, I jokingly say I don't, you know, I don't know how to do the internet or this, that, and the other. And I don't. And, and as a people of my, in my age category don't because we don't understand. We have not been programmed. We are like, like aliens in our own society. Uh, and 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 the things that 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 people are doing today, we would have to be born again to understand the world of the internet. People of my age category, we just don't understand it, and that's a good thing. That, that is, a, and we don't rely upon it. That is a good thing. What I'm hearing now from Francis Hogan, and what I suspect is going to be revealed. And the reason why I think that Facebook hacked itself and shut its operations down globally for six hours to clean out the nest. That's what I believe. I could be wrong. I could be absolutely positively wrong. And I leave room to be wrong. And would apologize if I am. But I, I believe that, they, that Facebook recognizes that they have become somewhat of a God with a little G, controlling the minds of all children, all children, all children, and controlling the minds of most people globally. It might be said at some time, if you're living in a poor nation where there is no you know, bandwidth or uh, online situations and underprivileged neighborhood, you are blessed because you're not going to be possessed by this all-encompassing social media platform. And Facebook has, it is, it is just out there. I'm going to meet with our educational staff and to look at all we now, because when we have to deal with parents, there, there's always been this contention of people who don't want spirituality in their lives or in the discipline of spirituality, uh, that life is freer for them and they'd prefer to live their lives on, if it feels good, let's do it. We'll worry about heaven and hell later on, but not now. We've got to look carefully as whether or not we're in a world where there is no turning back. And anybody on the 60 may be incorrigible that you have just been, you've been drawn into a, 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 an anti, if you will, world that supersedes the, con, the, the construction of the seven day template. That there, there's another thing going on. And you can only see this if you're someone like myself. 
And we need to discover if that is the case, then I, I can tell you that Facebook is not going to be taken down. That, that, the, the government, because the government itself is now, <laughs> the government itself is now subject to Facebook. And then there is this whole process whereby you can hack people. Governments hack each other. They shut down the colonial pipeline and ask for $5 million. They shut down Tyson's Food or some other beef distributor and ask for $5 million. Otherwise, they won't let you back up again. They can turn on your phones. Everything that a politician does or says is now stored away on some little chip somewhere. So therefore, he's now subject to um, someone revealing his most secret inner thoughts. You're not going to shut this. You're not going to shut Facebook down. I can tell you that now. Now, so uh, it's important that this, that we look at this, that as the, the righteous of God. And how can we, <laughs> Elizabeth was telling me about some young boys that we have in our school. Um, who rather than going to, uh, even going online and reading about events, they can just say, Siri, Siri, give me all the information about the Amazon River, the, uh, the, the, the Volga, the Tigris, and the Nile River. Give me all the information. And Siri would just, all, all you got, you don't even have to punch buttons anymore. All, you just add, and that is, that has brought, has it brought a better education system? Does it mean that our young people will be smarter? Their work ethics will certainly be different because you had to go to the library, go to the encyclopedia. You had to actually read. But now all the answers are given and there is, and then there's Google where you just Google anything and anybody Nobody is anonymous anymore. No one is anonymous. Google, you can Google anything or anybody. Is Google omnipotent? Omniscient? Nobody is anonymous anymore. Google and Facebook know more about people than God knows about them. There's a, there's a report that I think Francis Hogan is reporting or giving up that 10 likes on a particular platform will tell Facebook or whoever it is some things about you. 150 likes will tell the same social media platform more about you than your family knows about you. And, and they can program you because they know you better than your mother, your father, your pastor, or your priest. There's no one that is anonymous anymore. There is nothing that's un anonymous. There is nothing that's, that's hidden. Everything is online. Everything is on a, everything is on chip. Everything is on a program. And this is the world that we live in. God is not that that well versed, <laughs> you know, the, the verse in the Bible, even the hairs of your head are known. And every movement that you make. But Google can, and Facebook can say the same thing. And it's an inanimate, uncaring, and in many ways can be used in very prejudicial ways. I think it's important that... Um, we pay very careful attention to this, and I'm going to have a meeting with our staff, and I'll talk more about this on if there, this is the case, if we can possibly protect ourselves. And I don't know that we can. I don't know outside of the power of God that we will be able to protect ourselves. I'm James David Manning, and my theory is that Facebook went down because it took itself down because it wanted to remove information that they did, they did not want the world to, to lay siege on. But the one thing about, once it goes out on, on the internet, it never dies. It, everything put on the internet has eternal life.
This is the world we're living in. I'm glad I'm an old fuddy-duddy. What about you? I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant.